Welcome to a tutorial on banner ads. So this is just a tutorial to get this test ad showing on Android. Uh, when I was using banner ads for the first time in Flutter, I found their documentation very, very lacking and there's quite a few mystery steps that they don't tell you what to do uh, to get these test ads going, which is kind of unfortunate. The setup could be a lot easier. So that's the point of this tutorial. Just get you on your feet with a test ad on Android. Uh, so here is the plugin that uh, you gotta use. It's Google Mobile Ads. And you can see that their documentation is actually on a different website here. And you go to the get started and then you do the get started and it won't work. So I have a better guide and this is on GitHub and the description uh, contains a link to the repo there for these steps. Okay, so here's the setup steps for Android. You must increase the minimum SDK version to 19. So when you go Flutter create, your SDK version will not be high enough. So you go Android app build.gradle you change this number right here to 19 or higher. Next step, you must increase your Kotlin burden. So if you're using Kotlin for your Android stuff, uh, your Kotlin version by default will not be high enough. So you need to go to Android slash build.gradle, which is this one, and up this version. I'm using 1.4.32, that seems to work. Okay, so next up, we gotta add the metadata to the application section of the Android manifest. Now, they do tell you to do this in the README guide, but what they don't tell you is that there is a test device ID that you can use while you're developing, uh, which can allow you to do some work with just the test ads before you make your real uh, AdMob account and AdMob app. Because in order to make your AdMob app, um, it is ideal if your app is already on the Google Play Store, at least as like a beta or something like that. So this is a test device idea, and you can use this exact one here. This isn't like mine or something. Uh, so you go into Android, SRC main and then Android manifest. Oh my God. Okay. And then you add this metadata tag and this is a test app ID. So you can use this right here. So you just plug that at the bottom. Next up, uh, you run the app with your device and your device needs to be registered as a test device in um, this list of IDs. So what you gotta do is just try to run the app and your debug console um, is gonna print you something about your device not being you know registered properly and it will print you at least in my case it did this hopefully it does it for everybody it prints the test device a uh, test device id to your console you just copy and paste that and you throw it into where i'm going to show you okay so let's after we've done the setup let's look at how i've got um this all set up so first let's take a look at main so in main um what i've got here is just making sure it's initialized I instantiate my ad service, which we'll get to in a moment. And the ad service takes mobile ads instance, which is the actual plugin object. I'm using get it to register this as a singleton. Um, you could use whatever sort of pattern you want for uh, actually accessing the service. It really doesn't matter if it's get it or not, uh, get it or not. And then I await my ad service. And there is a to do here. If you await too many services in main, and if any of them have a chance of throwing an exception, uh, that's quite a bad thing because your user will just see a black screen until you get run app and if something throws in here and it's uncaught then your app is just not really going to start. start. Uh, so it's much better to do this in a splash screen and then once everything's ready you then navigate your user away from the splash screen but this tutorial does not have that so just a call out there. Uh, but yeah we initialize the ad service and then my app it just has a single scaffold with a bottom banner ad. So the um, banner ads fit very, very well in the bottom navigation bar of a scaffold. Okay, so let's look at my ad service. So up here, uh, what you're gonna do when you make your real AdMob account is you're gonna make an Android app and you're gonna make an iOS app and they are both going to need to be linked to the respective stores. Uh, those apps uh, unit IDs are gonna need to be, need to be put here. Uh, so if you also have interstitial ads, those will have different unit IDs. So a unit is like part of like a kind of a project. So uh, here's a fake um, dummy banner ID and a fake iOS ID. You would need to put real values in here. Uh, you would also need to update this with your own test device ID. Okay, so here's my ad service. It takes that mobile ads in, in its constructor, and here's this init method. Uh, so you initialize the mobile ads, and um, one thing that they really don't tell you here is that if you want to use test device IDs, you need to update the configuration of the mobile ads. So what you do is you just throw your test device IDs into here 
and then you pass that configuration into this method update uh, the configuration and that is asynchronous so I've awaited it as well uh, right there okay so that's in it and here's a method to get banner ads so once you have initialized it that is asynchronous so you're gonna have to await that um, then getting your ads is actually synchronous so you can see this is not a future banner ad you can just make a banner ad inline and then call load on it and what I found is that you do not need to await this load call. You can just fire and forget, which is quite convenient. So that means that your widgets don't need to use feature builders or anything gross. Uh, you can just directly display this guy. Okay, so here's the add unit ID. And I've got a getter to do that because it depends on several things. So first off, if you're debugging, you need your test add unit ID. And this is actually a constant from the plugin. So you can see banner add is their class test add unit ID. Um, they have one for Android and they have one for iOS. So that is at least built in. Then if you're Android, you're going to want to use your Android one and your iOS one. These would be your real ones. And then I just throw an unimplemented error here. Uh, you know, you can decide what you want to do if this actually works on desktop or whatever. Okay, so that banner uh, unit ID gets thrown into this banner ad. There's a couple different size options. This is one of the larger ones. Um, you can make a request and you can customize that request if you really want to. Um, you can put keywords and stuff like that. I'm just putting the default. You don't have to put anything in there. Uh, you do have to put a listener, although uh, my listener also doesn't really do anything other than just print new ad loaded and errors. So if you actually had errors, you'd probably want to hook up this service to the state of your app and, you know, do something. Maybe you just don't show your banners at all. Maybe you show a little error. I don't know what you want to do. Uh, but mine is just debug printing, as you can see here. Uh, you can also notice that ads do need to be disposed. So let's um, look at where this is used. So this is used in the component bottom banner ad. So here is my bottom banner ad. I've made it stateful because uh, I don't want this banner to get reinstantiated every single time that it builds. Uh, this is just going to get once when init state is uh, get created once when init state is uh, built, when the state class is instantiated. So one really convenient thing is that banner ads automatically show new ads after a certain period of time. So if I go into my console here, we can see new ad loaded a couple times. Um, you do not need to do anything like timing it for 30 seconds and then trying to show a new ad. Everything is handled internally for you. It's really, really easy. You just stick this um, banner into the ad widget, which is something that the uh, plugin gives you, and then you're good to go. So you don't need to think too hard about that stuff, which makes it really nice. However, I'm fairly sure you do need to dispose of them. So um, that's why another reason it's in a stateful widget. When this widget gets disposed, it'll also dispose of that banner there. And that's pretty much it. It's just in a container, and the size of the container is the size of the banner. Uh, if your ad doesn't load whatsoever, this will still have a height. Um, so it'll just be like blank, basically. Uh, so you can choose what you want to do with that. If your banners are failing to load, maybe you don't want just like dead space down there um, and you can just hide it, something like that. Um, so yeah, that's just about it. Let's just take a quick look at pubspec.yaml. All I've got in there is Google Mobile Ads and get it. Um, so yeah, that, that's hopefully enough information to get you on your feet with these banner ads. Um, it's a little upsetting how lacking their documentation actually is. I've seen quite a few issues on Reddit and Stack Overflow and stuff with people trying to just get this test ad showing up and it's uh, got a couple of magical steps. And uh, yeah, you can look at the readme if you uh, need future reference or just clone this repository honestly if you want.